Hello everybody, it's Kelly Folsom here and I want to welcome you back to another day of painting, another vital art session. In today's lesson, we're going to be painting a very classical theme, one that I have loved, that has been so near and dear to my heart for a long time, and that is this beautiful copper with this blue and white bowl in oranges. So it's a beautiful blue and orange combination, and also we will be discovering how how to get that copper to look like metal. So let's dive in and get started. Okay, so decision has been made. We are going vertical. All right, so that probably means with this pot being a little more square and wide that I will make it a little bit taller. So just using my burnt umber, which is what I toned with, which with a little bit of blue, I just want to find my size and placement. So I'll start with the, the tallest, biggest object here. And starting off with a drawing that is not really a drawing, it's really about a shape on the canvas. That's going to allow me to adjust the drawing if needed more easily or adjust that shape as needed. I love the, I love sort of the curve of this pot. This pot is huge. Throw a little bit of blue into that umber. Get it a little bit darker. Really ground this down. Underneath. And then of course I don't want to forget about the iron handle here and how that kind of curves around. That's going to make an interesting shape against the background. Uh, those ellipses, it's super important to get those accurate. Uh, but don't agonize over it, you know. I think it's better in the end that you have a painting that has some movement and life to it, has a strong concept, uh, to it rather than did I you know draw that ellipse perfectly <coughs> those of you who have been with me for a while um, actually I think it was whenever I was uh, in Paris I took some photos of some really bad ellipses that were <laughs> you know in Paris at the museum at the Louvre so really beautiful paintings and not perfect ellipses. So I, I loved that. I loved seeing that, you know, that these paintings, that they obviously didn't let the fact that the ellipse wasn't, you know, exactly correct, hold them back. Then we're gonna have this beautiful bowl of oranges here in front. And when you have objects like this and you have a really big grand object in the painting, you want to make sure that you size the smaller object appropriately, um, you know, so that we maintain the, the bigness of the main object. I'm going to kill the value down here uh, for now. And then I love that we have this beautiful blue background. So I'm going to take some blue into this and probably some black as well probably a lot mostly black and white the ivory black has a little bit of blue in it and then just to get a little extra flavor of blue I'll throw a little touch um, of this Prussian I actually ran out of you know what I have some cobalt I ran out of ultramarine blue um, and really, oh, sorry, really that this blue is a little too green. Um, so actually let's switch to some cobalt. I mean, that's pretty nice, but it's, you know, the, uh, Prussian thalo is just kind of bending it a bit to the green. I really want it to be blue, beautiful, beautiful blue. Cobalt, I use that a little bit more in landscape, perhaps. Um, it's just... 
but it is a pretty blue. It's just a really soft kind of blue, so let's add in some cobalt, and then a little touch of some Naples yellow. We have some light on this side. Light really frames out beautifully this little handle back here. Using a big brush, just getting some coverage here. But I also, I don't really ever like my backgrounds to be like so pasted on, especially in the beginning, because the background might actually be one of the things that gets altered the most. A little more white and yellow in this. This is kind of the most lit up part over here. The um, pot is throwing a cast shadow onto the backdrop, which is going to make a really beautiful um, foil for the light on those oranges. So I'm going to go a little bit darker, quite a bit darker, a lot more blue and black in the mix as we come over here. And I'm going to kind of scrub it on, you know, not super thick, throw a little more umber and maybe some transparent red oxide for a little bit warmer, deeper version for this uh, cast shadow here. That's really going to frame out the light for the oranges. And then that blue shows up repeated both in the both in the pot itself as well as in the bowl, the little French bowl. So I want to start, actually, you know what, let me just throw in some Naples yellow, maybe a little bit of ochre, since that goes very, very cool, a little too, too washed out, and I'm going to use that for shadow color on the white bowl. So it's just kind of like a neutral grayish tone we're going to have, and I think this needs to come up a little bit taller, there we go. We're going to have, you know, some, some darker blue pattern over top um, and then cast shadow onto the foot. This is enough for shadow right now on the copper bowl. Um, the other thing I like to do is just get a sense of my extremes, right? So I've really got, you know, perhaps my, my darkest dark in. What about one of my lightest lights? Um, I like to get a gauge of, you know, my extremes both in value and in color. So perhaps even it might be easier to even get, um, to judge that background color, the saturation of that if I would have had, you know, this brilliant yellow orange. So just using a palette knife to kind of get a nice layer of this intensity of color that's going to be in this bowl. Not worrying about, um, you know, separating out the oranges just yet, just kind of seeing them as a mass right now that's going to get separated out later on. So every object or background color, you know, everything is playing a role, has a, a role to play, serves a function. You know, it's like if you had all these different employees in your company and each employee sort of filled a different role. One was the accountant, one was the, <laughs> you know, customer service. <laughs> That's a terrible example. But, um, or like a roles in a play, right? You maybe have uh, the leading female role and the, uh, you know, the extras and this, anyways. So they all have a role to play and you don't want to forget that as you get lost and you don't want to get lost sort of in the minutia of painting, painting details. Okay, so just with some white and Naples, I'm going to start to get some of the light that's on the inside of this bowl. And again, I'm going to look for a shape, just a general shape that's going to frame out the um, the oranges, the shadow side of the oranges. And then this part of the bowl, I actually want that light to start to drop, especially as we get closer over here to the uh, shadow side. You notice I picked up some 
uh, shadow color so I'm going to wipe my brush and then I'm just going to come back over top and paint over that but this isn't you know straight white and then on the foot get some idea of the look of light down here you always want to start your sharpest edge um, on the most lit up edge and then kind of lift off with the brush as you're getting closer to shadow. And don't try to get too much control right now because the paint is super wet. Okay, now let's hop on over to copper. I'm gonna start with my Chinese orange uh, and let's see what that looks like with white first. That's pretty good. So this would be what might be called the local color of the pot. You know, uh, if you had to pick one color, um, you know, if somebody said, what color is copper? Um, it might be that you pick orange or red orange or yellow orange, depending on your perception of copper. But we all know that it's somewhat in the orange family. Obviously, it's not as you know, orange as these oranges over here. And there's more nuance to it, but um, starting with, I think what the, starting off with like one simple local color is always the best route. And then thinking about how the light is moving across the form, right? So this part of the form is not quite as much in light to the right. Actually, you need to kind of bring this down a little bit and whereas this part of the form where the highlight is that's the part that's getting the most amount of light on it and then we have under planes right that are more in shadow so I'm gonna use some umber some of my Chinese orange let's get a nice beautiful deep rich dark to go under here on this shadow plane This ellipse is a little higher up, closer to my eye level, so I'm not quite seeing as much on the inside. And then maybe just beef up this shadow a little bit more. Try to vary your brush strokes, you know, not have all your brush strokes going one direction. And then what's another characteristic of metal? Um, it's that it, you know, this particular metal is shiny uh, and it's going to have a big reflection. Because it's reflective and shiny, you know, we're gonna get a lot of this orange color reflected into the shadow plane. So, and actually I can just take since I haven't finished out these oranges yet, I could just kind of take that color from the orange and just sort of walk it up. And then it also shows up in this underplane here of the pot. Now, the other thing that happens is with metal is that you have to get some of the complementary color or the opposite temperature. Um, you know, so you, you need to have both cool and warm working together with when it comes to metal. So you can use blue and orange to kind of mix together. And then of course, keeping, keeping with the uh, law of the value change as we shift over to closer to the um, shadow, kind of keeping those values closer together. And I'm kind of graying down the local color using my background color. And then we also kind of have this back edge here going into shadow as well from the light blocker. I've got a little more taper on this than what's actually there in real life. Okay. 
Now we do have some some uh, kind of light gray for the inside of the metal. So I might use some burnt umber, ivory black, some Naples yellow. I'm going to change the angle of my brush so I can get a sharper edge here. But that would be the side that's actually really cupping the light on the inside of the metal. And then this side would be, you know, more in shadow. And I'll get back, you know, those handles here in just a little bit. It's always a wise idea to paint what's behind something or underneath first and then paint the other thing on top. So for me, this is reading a little blue to be shadowy in the background. So I'll just take some black and burnt upper and just kind of paint right into that. Sometimes if you have too much color in a shadow, it will come forward to our eye. So if you have too much local color, it'll actually start to come forward. So I just want to neutralize some of the blue there. Actually, I can take that same blue and just kind of start to walk it in. I don't know why I call it walk it in, but Get to stepping, get to stepping into the shadow background color. Um, and then we have a, some beautiful reflections from our background color over here. And that's something that I would think is going to be important to let us know that this is separate from the cast shadow back behind and also metal just showing up, uh, showing that reflection there. Like I pulled this a little over to the left. Pull it back. Trying to, you know, make decisive, bold brush strokes. As you complete the work, you know, you can get more and more sensitive as far as that goes. Um, the other thing that I would love to do is bring in some more kind of blue grays for where some of this, um, you know, some of the copper has kind of worn off, I guess is what's happened. And then using the palette knife, that can also kind of help me get some really beautiful textures, just some more visual interest in this pot, more layers. And then I can just kind of mix all these colors together really because they're blue and orange. I'm gonna get some, some nice neutrals in there. And where's that blue? Blue and white. Black and white actually might be really nice, but since it has a little less color into it, let's try that black and white instead to get this really beautiful gray, cool gray. And you know, if you go too far, there's only one way to find out. It's, it's by putting the paint down. And if you go too far, get, get too much of one color, get too much paint, you can always take it off. But I think that's kind of part of painting is seeing, seeing what the boundaries are. Ooh, this is, you know, and I think just in general too, see, are you painting with your palette knife enough? That would be a good question to ask. Are you experimenting with your paint quality enough? Are you just painting everything the same exact way? You're too scared to just throw some paint on there and give it a go. So you definitely don't want to get stuck in that trap. Okay, and then also if you if something gets too cluttered or um, too much, you know, brushwork activity going on, you can always take a knife and just kind of flatten out and pull some of that paint off or smooth it out. I'll do here because I want to paint the pattern on top of this. 
back here, maybe as it's going back into space. And again, just kind of walk those edges together there. If I want to get some idea of light spilling out, I might actually just break this whole edge right here with a brush. Same thing over here. It can accomplish two things that can flatten out the paint also letting that sort of glow swim out into the uh, background. Let's do a little bit more of that on that edge. Fun. Halation, baby Jesus halo. I'm assuming that's pretty sacrilegious to say that, but it's what it feels like. Or maybe we should say angel halo instead of baby Jesus halo. So when it comes to halation, it had the object has to be uh, the background has to be darker in value than the thing that is reflecting into the background. So you can't do like a red glow onto a white background or even a, even a uh, orange glow onto a white background. It's just the white background is going to reflect more light than the, um, than the object that's bright. So uh, whatever is the lightest object is usually going to reflect the light, the most amount of light back to our eye. The biggest, lightest object. So that's why if you have a white background, you can't let, you know, yellow might be the closest thing, but even that yellow is usually darker in value than uh, white. Anyways, just thought I would mention that. I learned that lesson pretty early on in art school because I was like, oh, I want to paint this really romantic painting. And so I had like this red rose and for some reason I had it sticking out of like this wicker ball. It was really kind of weird. I think I found it at Pier 1. But um, I tried to do the glow thing on the deep. It was like a dark red rose against the... Uh, it was like a tan beige background and it just looked like the rose was bleeding. So I knew that it didn't look right. And of course, when I took it into class, the instructor very quickly told me that it didn't look right. Of course, she didn't explain why, unfortunately. That would have been nice. It took me a lot longer to figure out why it didn't work. <laughs> Maybe she didn't know why it didn't work. She just knew it didn't work. Who knows? Or maybe she was just tired that day and didn't have her coffee. We'll just assume that. Okay. So um, bringing back the simplicity of that shape, kind of calming down some of the paint. I'm actually going to take some Chinese orange, a uh, little touch of that red oxide, and I'm going to use that as a shadow color paint straight into this uh, mess of paint. But that's going to make all my shadows feel really nice and glowy. I really want this whole big white bowl. The white bowl is reflecting a lot of light. The oranges are reflecting a lot of light. So I really want some nice glowy shadows. So I can paint straight into that to get shadow color. And then I can start to bring back in some of these shapes. You'll have to watch your angle of your brush. If it digs in too much to the paint, you're just going to pick up whatever's underneath. So you have to make sure that your brush is very parallel to the surface when you're working this wet into wet. This back orange is lighter in value. than the ones in front. So you have to find ways to separate, separate these out. And then I think this one, the shadow needs, uh, we need a little bit 
darker shadow on this side and kind of scooch that little guy over a little bit more. I think even going a little bit darker on this one just to separate out the one that's back behind. So with these pochade boxes, um, I think because the palette is here, it's really uh, difficult to get particular angles to your brushwork. And then this is an overlapping edge, this orange in front of the other orange and pot. So we must have a strong enough edge there. Go a little more orangey, that cad yellow deep. And what's really going to kind of make this thing come to life, of course, is that pattern on the bowl. Sort of the thing that ties together all of these separate objects. Also gives that little bowl, let's see, this looks like a clean spot. So on the pattern, I like to use a little more of the marge to get the paint a little bit thinner kind of to act as a glaze, sort of a, a faux glaze. And of course, the thinner, the more marge gets added in there, the thinner it's gonna go and it's going to mix on top of all of that really wet white paint. And then we have to go a little bit darker on the shadow side. So I'm going to add in a little bit of black there. Perhaps also add a little less marge so that it sits more on top of that shadow color. So in order to get form, you have to really Make sure that you are changing those values between light and shadow. I want to make sure I get a little bit of background color in here, background shadow color, especially on this side, closer to the background, and perhaps even a little flavor of it here. Okay. Um, good. I think just maybe popping a little more sharp edge down here on the foot. Um, and then popping a little more highlight both on this orange and then on the front of the bowl. Be nice. And maybe a little more reflection from the white bowl onto the front table edge. Okay, hey everybody, I hope that you have enjoyed this. And as always, I wish you happy painting. Bye.